Hello, the Darkness 344 here, and in today's video, I'm just going to be showing off this very simple um, Fibonacci machine kind of thing that I made. So, I just wanted to kind of make a more, well, another example for like some sort of sequential circuit. So, I have my multiplier, which I'll definitely make a tutorial on at some point. But I also just wanted to have some other sequential circuit as well, just to show off. And what this does is, well, it just completes the Fibonacci sequence. So a lot of times um, people will just use the Fibonacci sequence as like a baseline test for your computer. And this is because it's very simple. So um, if you don't know already, the Fibonacci sequence is just, well, a sequence where um, your result is the previous two terms added. So it goes, well, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, etc, etc. So what this does is basically just do that. So over here we have several features. So we have, well, a start button to um, first start off the sequence, because of course, if both of your previous terms are zero and you add them, you're gonna get zero and you'll be stuck in a loop. So you have to add a one in at some point. Then we have a simple clock button uh, to, well, have the next value of the sequence. And then over here we have a reset button, which will just reset it. So let's actually just give this a go. So we can start the sequence like this and this will just put a 1 into it or into the registers which I'll show off in a minute and then we can just clock it and then we just keep getting the values added so 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, it's a bit slow, 13, then 21 of course and it'll, it'll keep going and we can just keep um, clocking it like this so the way this works is we use a very simple um, circuit all we're doing is we have an adder over here so all this does is just add two inputs and it will give an output over here which goes round into these two different do these two sets of registers so this circuit over here doesn't actually do anything this is just for resetting um, the thing um, but uh, we have the adder and these two registers which are the main part of the circuit so the way this will work is that because we're adding the two previous terms um, on the first um, loop round, one of the registers will just get the number one input. But then when it loops round again, um, the output of the adder will go round and save to um, the opposite register. So if this one had one in um, and the other one had zero in, the output of the ALU, so zero plus one, would go round this wire down here and be stored into this register. So now we have one and one. Then the same thing would happen again, so 1 plus 1, which would be 2, but the output of that, instead of going back into that same register, it would go flip to the opposite register. So this means, um, effectively, we can add the previous two terms, because we're always alternating registers that we use, and this saves us from having additional registers to store extra terms and stuff, and means we can, well, limit to only two registers in the entire system. So the way I've got it flipping between the two registers is very simple. We just use a T flip-flop like this. And all these circuits are over here and here are just um, pulse shorteners. So they'll just give a one tick pulse into the registers to save a value. So these don't actually do too much of the function. Then of course this bit over here is just part of the, the reset button. So when we click reset, it's going to, of course, um, clear both the registers by um, inputting a zero to both of them. So there are other ways of resetting it of course, but this was just the easiest way. So now um, the other things that happen, so of course when we click the start button, what it's going to do is going to put a one in one of the registers, but which register do we put it in? Because we don't actually know the state of the T flip-flop, because um, it could be either this one or it could be this one, so we which register do we pulse? Well what we can do is when we um, press the start button, not only is it going to, well, um, turn the increment line on, which will output a one from the ALU, it's also going to trigger the T flip-flop, which will um, go over to the, just whichever one is off, it'll turn it on, and it will briefly just trigger that register, um, which will save the value one, of course, because we are inputting a one from having the increment line on, or the carry-in line, should I say. And then just the clock button, all this does is just flip the T flip-flop. This actually doesn't do anything other than um, clock the T flip-flop, and that's because um, the ALU will always just be outputting whatever those two registers are added together, and the registers um, will only update whenever the T flip-flop um, tells them to. 
so it's a, it's a very simple system so yeah that's pretty much it um there'll be a well download in the description if you want to try experiment yourself um the only problem with this is that it's only 8-bit um and we can't exactly expand it anymore um without doing some tricky stuff because this is a carry cancel adder so if you did want to expand this to like, say 16-bit um you might have a bit of problem um with the um getting the carry line all the way up to the other modules of the other well at least the other bits of the other even so yeah i guess um please like and subscribe and i'm out